2022 academic year so at ITS we are committed to support you to uh, support you with the best learning materials to support you in your academic journey and anything that you, you need in order to be successful in your academic journey so uh, a quick introduction my name is Mora Abdujami uh, level trainer student at the University of Ghana here and I'll be taking you through academic writing too so, so I'll put my uh, email address in the link in the uh, description link below in case you, you have any question you can uh, just send me an email or also you can comment below we will respond to you uh, as soon as possible yes so this is lecture one this is our first lectures so the lecture one is going to be divided into two to section one and section two so this is the, six, the first aspect and then um, reference is adika 2011 and bailey the main recommended uh, book so you can find uh, whatever we are going to be talking about in, from page 142 to 146 so i encourage you to get the book if you don't have the hard copy you can get the um soft copy but if you don't also have it you can just email me or just uh, request for it in the comment section below and to be delivered to you so today we are going to be talking about deviant usage and common errors so deviant usage is something that usually occurs to us uh, as students that we usually use words wrongly and we use them inappropriately where the words are not supposed to be as well we place it and all those kind of things so the use of words and expression that depart from acceptable practice or when such uh, and when such wrong usage becomes persistent the quality of our writing surface so that is when we use expression or words that depart from the acceptable practice of academic writing it makes our writing surface so these lectures seek to draw our attention to these errors and also to help us avoid uh, those errors so this is the outline of the of, of the uh, deviant usages and common errors we are going to be talking about so we will be tackling misplaced modifiers dangling modifiers common splice uh, split infinitives pronoun antecedent agreement rambling sentence double uh, double subject sentence fragments parallel structures subject verb agreement co confusing ways so in this first part we will uh, tackle misplaced modifiers dangle modifiers common splice and split infinitives and in the second uh, uh, section we will talk about the rest so what is the mod uh, misplaced modifier so basically a modifier a modifier is a content word that qualifies the meaning of a verb so it is any word or any word used in the content or a phrase that's used in the content that modifies or that um, alters the meaning of a verb right so when a uh, uh, so a misplaced modifier is a word phrase or a clause that is improperly separated from the word it modifies so when you say you have misplaced the modifier it means that you have incorrectly separated the word that it modifies from the modifier simply put a word or a phrase apparently modifying an unintended word because of its placement in a sentence so sentences with this error often sound awkward and confusing so we will look at uh, examples so one example of a misplaced modifier is that when somebody says 
on her way on, on her way home Akosia found a gold a gold man's watch how does this sound it sounds awkward right so uh, this sentence suggests that a gold man owns a watch which is not the intended meaning so the modifier months the is has been uh, inappropriately uh, misplaced so so misplaced modifiers are usually corrected by moving the modifier to a more appropriate place in the sentence generally next to the word it modifies so to correct a misplaced modifier you just have to move the modifier next to the word it modifies so let's modify this example so on her way home Akosia found a man's gold watch on her way home Akosia found a man's gold watch this sounds right okay so uh, what we did is that we moved the modifier man's next to the word it is trying to uh, modify that's gold yes <laughs> sorry we move the modifier gold next to the word it's trying to modify that's watch so the gold will, the gold is modifying the watch so the modifier gold has now been placed next to the word it modifies and that is what we can now say the modifier has correctly has been correctly placed so uh, with misplaced modifier we have three types we have misplaced adjectives rather four we have misplaced adjectives uh, misplaced adverbs misplaced phrases and misplaced clauses so uh, let's tackle this one by one they are so the misplaced adjectives i hope we all know what adjectives are if you don't know please go and write your notes <laughs> so they are incorrect they are incorrectly separated from the nouns they modify and almost always distort the intended meaning so when you misplaced an adjective it almost distorts the intended meaning what you are trying to communicate it changes everything so look look at this example Koku ate a cold dish a cool dish of cereal for breakfast Koku ate a cold dish of cereal for breakfast so the relative cold is wrongly placed is uh, the cold is supposed to modify cereal right it's supposed to modify the noun cereal but it has been placed next to dish which is wrong so we just have in order to correct it we move the code next to cereal so this is the corrected version Koku ate a bowl of cold cereal for breakfast so the word cold is now a correctly placed adjective that modifies cereal yes. so sentences like this so um let's move on to the next misplaced modifier which is uh, adverbs so misplaced adverbs so wrongly placed adverbs in a sentence can change the meaning of the sentence as well just as uh, adjectives it can also change the meaning of the sentence we so let's look at this example we ate the lunch that we bought slowly it sounds awkward right <laughs> so we ate the lunch that we bought slowly so this suggests that uh, the lunch was bought slowly which we doesn't make any sense right so this sentence suggests that we bought lunch slowly so in order to correct the adverb we move the word slowly to the uh, word it uh, to the uh, to the verb is trying to modify which is it so we slowly ate the lunch that we bought we slowly ate the lunch we bought yes so um what are for adverbs such as only just nearly almost and these these are uh, adverbs that we usually use wrongly in our daily statement and in our writing so we need to pay particular attention to that
So uh, unless misplaced modifier is phrases, misplaced phrases. So this may cause a sentence to sound awkward and may create a meaning that does not make sense, right? So let's let's look at an example. I just sold the food to the customer with fresh meat. I just sold the food to the customer with fresh meat. So this sentence uh, suggests that the customer has a skin made of fresh meat. The customer has a, a skin made of fresh meat. It does not make any sense, right? So in order to correct this uh, misplaced phrase, so we move the phrase next to the word it is trying to modify. So to clarify the meaning, put the phrase next to the noun they are supposed to modify. All right. So this is how we we can correct it. I just sold the food with fresh meat to the customer. I just sold the food with fresh meat to the customer. Yeah. So the noun here is meat and the modifier is fresh. So uh, food with fresh. Yeah. So the let's let's look at another example of a misplaced phrase so the dealer sold the cadillac to the buyer with leather seat so this this um this is trying to suggest that uh the the dealer sold the the cadillac to the buyer with leather seat so it is trying to suggest that the buyer has a leather seat it does not make any sense right so in order to correct it this is how we can put it the dealer sold the cadillac with leather seat to the buyer so as uh, as a note here the cadillac is actually is actually a brand of an automobile they produce cars and all these automobile parts so uh, the dealer sold the Cadillac with leather seats to the buyer. Yeah. So our next um, common error or deviant usage is dangling modifier. So when a modifier occurs without the item that it modifies, we say that the the modifier is dangling, right? It doesn't have any thing to modify so we say that the item to modify is missing so let's look at examples when I when nine years old my mother enrolled in medical school when nine years old is a dangle modifier right because the we don't know what 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 the modifier is trying to modify here right when nine years old why is it trying to modify it doesn't say anything it doesn't make any sense right so what if another example is walking to the movies the cold best drenched gym walking to the movie the cold best uh the cold best drenched gym this sentence suggests that the cold best is walking to the movies even though a possible worker gym is mentioned right so in order to correct these two uh, dangle modifiers we can see that when um, when I was nine years old my mother enrolled in medical school and you can correct the example ten as um, walking to the movies the cold uh, gym was drained by the cold best right so let's look at how uh, it is modified here so in order to modify a dangle modifier to correct a dangle modifier we have two ways of doing that so the first way is to leave the modifier as it is change the main part of the sentence so that it begins with the term it actually modifies so this will change the modifier or this will put the modifier next to the term it, try, uh, it is trying to modify so uh, as in the case of the examples we gave earlier walking Walking to the movies, the the cold best drink gym. So so this we can leave the main part like this. Then we we change the the 
we can leave the leave the modifier as this then we change the main part so we alter the uh, the code base join gym part so we 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 will bring gym at the beginning of that main part so how we are going to do it is walking to the movies gym was drenched by the cold base as i said earlier so the second uh correction method is to change the dangle modifier phrase to a subordinate clause creating a subject and verb leaving the rest of the sentence as it is so in the case of uh, the nine years old and the mother example so we can say that when i was nine years old when i was i think uh, when i was nine years old my mother enrolled in a, in medical school so now it has uh, the modifier has something to modify yeah Our next uh, deviant usage and common error is comma splash, comma splash. So two sentences or independent clauses that are incorrectly joined by a comma. So two independent sentences or clause that are incorrectly joined by a comma. This is, this is a very common mistake that I also used to make. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we all make this mistake especially in writing we we tend to uh, put comma inappropriately to separate two independent clauses so this is an example the internet has made the world smaller you can meet people everywhere so you can see that these are independent clauses so uh, with this common with this comma splash uh, there's 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 also three ways of 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 correcting such an error so the first way of correcting such an error is to use a comma and a subordinate and a coordinating conjunction such as and or not so and yet so uh, with the example we gave we can so, so you, you put the comma, then you follow it by a coordinating conjunction. So the example we gave, the internet has made the world smaller, comma, so you can meet people everywhere has been corrected. So, the, so use comma in a coordinating conjunction. So the second way of correcting such an error is to use a semicolon. So the internet has made the world smaller semicolon you can meet people everywhere the third way of correcting such an error is to treat the clauses as separate sentences by putting a period of full stop at the end of each of the uh, independent clause so the internet has made the world smaller full stop or period you can meet people everywhere so um our next common error in different usage is split infinitives so a split infinitive is a grammatical construction in which a word or a phrase divides the two and the bare infinitive verb so the infinitive of a verb is the form given in the dictionary where no specific subject is indicated so it, these are the words that you see in the dictionary to play to bribe to eat to find to laugh to dance to to write all those uh verb that begins with two 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 so so um so a split infinitive occurs when the two is separated from its verb by other words so when other words separate the two um when other words separate the two from the verb uh, it is joined with usually it is sufficient to move the offending word to it uh, so that 
so that it comes either before or after the infinitive. So in order to correct the split into infinitive, so you just have to move the offending word, the word that uh, separates the two and the verb, either before the two and the verb or after the infinitive. Let's take this example out. Um, Kwame's teacher told him never to look back. Kwame's teacher told him to never look back, right? So the correct uh, version should be Kwame's teacher told him never to look back. So here you can see that the, the verb is look, right? And then to and the never is, is separating the two and the verb. The never is separating the two and the verb here. So in order to correct it, we just have to move the never either before or after the uh, infinitive. So this one, we are moving it before, we are moving it before the infinitive. So Kwame teacher, Kwame's teacher told him never to look back. Another example, she told, she told me I had to quickly finish the sandwich. She told me I had to quickly finish the sandwich. So here we can see that the to and the verb finish is uh, split by the word quickly. So in order to correct it, we move the quickly uh, to after the infinitive. So she told me I had to finish the sandwich quickly. She told me I had to finish. So the verb is finished, right? So the two comes before the verb. So to finish, to finish. So now we have removed the quickly from that aspect, from that place. So another example is that I was told to always pay attention in class. I was told to always pay attention in class. So here, the verb here is pay right and the two is also here the word the word uh, always has divided the two and the verb so in order to correct it you just have to eliminate this always to either before the infinitive or after the infinitive so this is how you can phrase it i was told to always pay i was told always to pay I was told always to pay attention in class. I was told always to pay attention in class. Or you can also phrase it as I was told to pay attention in class always. I was told to pay attention in class always. Yeah. So this is the end of the first section. See you in the next section.